Now, why, you might be wondering, has the first chunk of this episode just been a time lapse of me mining out a bunch of stone? Well, <laughs> the answer to that is just over this ridge and on a nearby hilltop. Because it is from here that we can get our first real look at the Great Bridge. <laughs> this is what I've been collecting materials for in the hope of restoring from this world's distant past. An enormous road, a testament of the building capabilities of civilizations gone by, spanning the entirety of this lake and transporting traffic of all kinds to the capital city. And each section of the bridge supported by these twinned sets of pillars, six pairs of them in total, stretching off into the distance. This is going to be one of the biggest things that I have ever built. And it feels like I'm reconstructing a part of the old world as I do. Now initially when I envisioned this project, I imagined parts of it crumbling and ruined, falling into the lake, towers kind of hewn off at the sides, and maybe bits of the bridge actually fallen out. Because I doubt anybody will actually use this to walk over, we probably all have things like elytra and stuff now, even the folks who aren't planning on using elytra all that much will probably have different routes figured out around this place already. But what I'm thinking is, each of the 12 towers of this lake can belong to one of the empires, and maybe they can choose to decorate it, put a statue up to their current empire, or maybe even use them as little trading posts or something like that. Have like a little shop secreted in there where people can come and trade goods, maybe use it as a drop-off point, something like that. I don't know. But the fact is the option is there, and I kind of like the fact the, the motif of this having 12 different towers just kind of appealed to me in that way. So I have a lot of building to do, because despite how realistic this rendering looks, none of it is actually here right now, and I'm just going to use that as a template. I'm going to be building the entire thing myself from scratch, hence the amount of stone and stuff that I have gathered. I will need a lot more other types of material, but the stone is at least the start. And what I'm hoping to do is get at least the bridge portion of this built, and then the towers which require a bit more intricate material can be brought in later, because there's stuff like coal ore and, you know, other bits and pieces of material here. I need to start farming a bit more mud, and I also need to figure out how exactly these pillars are going to be supported once they reach the water, because this lake is actually an entire river. It's not an ocean of sorts, it's actually a river, and so I'm kind of wondering how the current of the river flows and what kind of supports would be best to hold this up. But I haven't thought that far ahead yet, I've mostly just been excited to show you folks what I've been envisioning for this area. But before that work can really start, I need to get my explorer's hat on, because there is one thing I would really love to have before we can start construction on a massive project above a lake that I'm probably going to have to crouch and place a lot of blocks. I would like to get hold of a swift sneak enchantment for my leggings. And you know what that means, folks? We're going to have to go to the Deep Dark's ancient cities in order to get hold of that enchanted book. Luckily for me, I have a great deal of string that I can turn into wool. I have a backup suit of iron armor because you really don't need to take your diamond armor to the Deep Dark if the plan is to avoid the Warden. And if this portal goes back to my strip mine, there is a Deep Dark biome really close by. In fact, <laughs> I tripped a couple of Skulk Shriekers while I was mining the this whole area out and nearly spawned the Warden during a mining time lapse. And so while I'm hoping to avoid the Warden, I'm also hoping that we can run across an ancient city by exploring further down in this area. Obviously I didn't want to mine any lower than this because this is the last point in the world where we can get stone and also get a decent amount of other resources, but I'm thinking if we end up exploring a bit more of this abandoned mineshaft, hopefully we can dig a little further down and find ourselves an ancient city. And there are definitely stretches of this that lead down into a larger deep dark dark biome and is that oh my gosh <laughs> we found one so quickly also there are diamonds behind that glow lichen don't think i don't see them yes i put my silk touch and my fortune pickaxes away but that's why i brought the ender chest with me so i could get them back although i think i'm gonna leave that here for the moment because i don't want to take my silk touch pick down into the deep dark with us now i think we should be okay just bringing what we've got with us and trying to avoid getting detected by any of the sensors around here but what i'm really after is going to be areas like this these towers that are a little bit out of the way and i'm hoping not too much Skulk has generated around there so that there won't be too many Shriekers. And often these will have a couple of treasure chests in, like that one right at the top there, and I'm hoping that that's going to have a Swift Sneak Enchanted book in it. I'm resisting exploring too much more of the city for now. If I can get what I want out of this chest, then I'd love to come back here with somebody else and do the kind of co-op approach of taking on one of these cities together. But from the looks of things, there aren't really any Shriekers around, so... 
Unfortunately, we don't end up with the enchanted book quite yet. We got a regen potion, we got some glow berries. I guess I'll take the music disc fragments, but it seems like we're gonna have to keep looking. I see another chest over there, shrieker in a couple of sensors nearby, but it looks like just the one shrieker here, so I'm hoping that this is going to be a simple enough scenario to defuse. Yes, perfect. Now let's take a look in here. Lots of amethyst shards, more music disc fragments, but still no swift sneak enchantment. I might take the fire protection leggings though, I actually kind of like having fire protection on at least one item. Let's climb back up the tower to see where our next best option is going to be. I think I see another chest in that tower over there, I might give that one a try, otherwise it's going to be a matter of looting some of the side rooms and they get a little bit trickier. Okay, we're in, I don't see any shriekers around, so other side disc? <laughs> we have another side disc, but we still haven't found Swift Sneak. Central room over there, maybe? I'm actually pretty high up here. I think I need to get down. And once again, it looks like this Shrieker here. Yeah, it's probably the only one in this area. There's one over there as well. <sighs> get rid of you. And I don't hear any other Shriekers, so that's hopefully us in the clear. Chest number four. Oh yes, we got one! Fantastic! Swift sneak and some some backup leggings, even better. I'll take the echo shards as well and the coal, <laughs> much needed down here. Piercing I don't really care much for and we have another music disc fragment, that's up to five now. But once again, much as I would love to stay and loot the remainder of this ancient city, I think it needs a co-op approach and I would love to bring somebody else down here and show them the delights of this. I have raided one of these in my single player world in the Minecraft survival guide, I'm in the process of turning it into a base as well actually. So I think it'd be more fun to bring somebody else down here and show them the ropes, as it were. But for now, I've got what I came for, thank goodness. Alright, <laughs> let's say goodbye to the city for now, we'll take the coordinates, and I'm sure we'll be back. Hello, lore man! Oh, hi! <laughs> you came out of nowhere. I know, I, I accidentally overshot, I kind of <laughs> ran that way and then realised I'd backed on myself, so... I overshot. Hello! Oh, look at your little outfit. Thank you, yeah. No, I've been doing, doing a lot of exploring. <laughs> so, um, yeah, got the, the official little, explorer hat. little hat cute. on and everything. Yeah, yeah. You're looking very, uh, very colourful yourself these days. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> your it's, little twirl it, and everything. Yeah, I've got to show off the outfit. Of course you have, of course you have. Yeah, a lot of work went into that. Exactly. But I hear you're the frog light man. I am now the frog light man, yes. Um, <laughs> it's it's a strange identity I've taken on, but it's happened. So um, the lore man, the frog light man, whatever, whatever one works. What, whichever shoe fits. Uh, so you're in the market, I take it, yeah. Yes. Um, I come bearing. Oh, this. perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Oh wow, and like two stacks of each. Great stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay, um, help yourself, uh, from, I've got a, I've got a lot of them these days, so. I'm just gonna take the, I'm gonna take one of the green and one of the yellow. Okay, yeah, that sounds great, that sounds great. I've been, been trading a bit of honeycomb for the yellow ones already, and yeah, I think there's a few other people who said they wanted some, so that seems like a decent exchange rate to me. Yeah, and I said if you need more dye, just come to Chromia. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. place to die for. <laughs> it's very but... good, very good. I like it a lot. Yes. No, I, I also I like your ruins. These yeah, are cool. That's kind of why I need the grey, to be honest. Working with a lot of grey <laughs> this time around. Yep. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm working on ways to make it colourful, but obviously, like cyan terracotta, a bit of grey concrete powder, all of that's going to go a long way in yeah, a build just like to this. Just add a bit of texture. No, it mm -hmm. looks really good. Thanks. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I, it's, I, a, it's funny <laughs> the stark difference between your area and then you come oh, to yeah. Chromia. And uh -huh. it's just so much color. It's like it's, coming to visit me is like walking into a Tim Burton film or something. It's like everything yep. is suddenly grayscale. But yeah, Whereas no. It's mean as Disney on an acid trip. <laughs> it's very very fun. I like it. I'll have to pay you a visit. I've I've been through Chromia very briefly on the way to visit Gem, mm -hmm. so I'll have to uh, pay a more permanent visit sometime soon. To be fair, I feel like every time someone comes, a new building has just popped up. So yeah, yeah, um, no. it just gets slowly more colourful as things get added. <laughs> sounds great, sounds great. Looking forward to it. Yeah, but um, yeah. yeah, if you need any more frog lights, let me know because I have them in abundance at this point. So plenty where okay, that came from. Perfect. I said dyes. I can basically make. The only thing I don't really have access to right now is black dye. Yeah, because uh -huh. I don't have weather uh, rosies. So yeah, and, and a, be a, the... a squid farm on a server is always tricky. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I will maybe wait until I get weather rosies and figure out how to set that up. But for now, black dye. It's not very really colorful. It doesn't match my aesthetic anyway. Yeah, no, totally, so totally. It's fine. Uh huh. But yeah. um, if you need more dye, let me know. Thank you very much for your frog lights. They will come in very useful. <laughs> will do. Um, Safe journey and home. And I will catch you later. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Not bad. 
bad. I knew the frog lights were going to be a winner, but now we have swift sneak. We only have one thing left to do, and that's hop over the ridge here and start building the great bridge. So I've loaded up my ender chest with all the shulker boxes of material that I think I should need for at least the first part of that. Let's get building.
So if you've been wondering where I've been the last week, <laughs> the answer was building this. It took a long, long time. I had to go back to that strip mine for stone. Goodness knows how many times. This is probably one of the largest things I built in one go without, you know, making progress update videos or something like that. But I just couldn't do it. I just, I started out building the large kind of platform and I thought maybe I would leave it there. But... In order to count out the segments, I basically had to redesign those because I designed that before the towers went in and it looked kind of weird where they didn't connect to the towers properly. So I basically decided to build all of the towers, all of the archways, everything else just kind of fell into place from there. But gosh, <laughs> this was this was a lot of work and I'm so, so happy that it's here because can you imagine, like, later on in the season, later on when people have already been playing for a while, something like this popping up and then having to kind of you know, wish away the idea that this had been here the entire time. <laughs> like, it, it's kind of difficult to suspend your disbelief. So it's kind of important that we build stuff like this nice and early. And right now it just connects to the hillsides on either side. I mean, this this road basically like rams into the side of this hill and Looney Tunes style, I'm not gonna paint a tunnel on the side of that. I am actually going to start terraforming this hill, taking it down and building up some kind of gateway that leads to my area. But of course, on the opposite side, we have a village and that village is pretty close I think to where false symmetry is building but beyond that obviously we can start to build roads out that connect the majority of the rest of the server they're not all going to be this they're not all going to be massive bridges and whatnot but I think it starts to set up the possibility of a road network connecting everybody's empires and I really want to tame a horse really soon just so I can cross this bridge on a horse and have it not be you know a really long journey on foot because this thing is about 400 blocks or so long you can't see one side of it from the other although if you stand in the middle you can see it both sides pretty clearly and that's pretty much the only way you can see it from the side is if you stand somewhere in the middle like over here on this side of the lake but as I said each of these towers is meant to be claimed by one of the other empires so that they can decorate the outside or the inside of it if they want to they can remodel this top part if they would like to to make it feel a bit less broken down the basalt actually feels like scaffolding and rebar or something like it feels like some of this is still really under construction and I will probably make a few more tweaks to the bridge here and there but I love the way the design came out as I was constructing this on stream, I kind of designed each of these to just have a bit of texture on the outside. I wasn't overthinking it too much, but Liara, one of my mods and another fantastic content creator here on YouTube and also on Twitch, suggested that each of these could like be a high water line from some point in the distant past. Even though there's like a ridge around there, all of the mud and moss and everything that's built up around there could indicate that at some point in the past, this lake area has been way more flooded, as though it was kind of like a reservoir of sorts and that at each moment in history like it's had a high water line on this bridge maybe it started out and the bridge was almost floating on the surface of the water like a pontoon and then these were built to support it on the lake bed and of course as the water receded each time it did that it left a line of mud and sediment and moss and stuff would build up around the outside because of course it's leaving all of the you know waterborne plants and stuff around there which I kind of like the idea that in this world's history at some point some kind of massive ecological event has happened which has led to the waters of this lake receding and over time it's just left the remainder of the Great Bridge exposed like this. Beyond that, of course, I do still need to have a way of attaching it to the lake bed. That wasn't part of my schematic, so these pillars are maybe going to be supported by this square base, or they're maybe going to go all the way down to the lake floor in their cylindrical form, but right now they really aren't doing all that much. They're kind of floating on the water as though they are suspended like this. But I'm really happy with how this turned out, and uh, yeah, we can probably get rid of this dirt bridge over here now. I think we've got a better bridge you can use. Spawn is right over there, by the way. That's the campfire over there at Spawn. So this is very visible from the spawn area if people respawn here they're gonna be like what the heck is this I think only one or two people have seen it though so far people don't tend to come by this area all that much and I'm pretty sure that only Fwip has seen this whilst it's been under construction so hopefully I've managed to dodge other people seeing it and when they come here they're just gonna be like wow okay a bridge popped up seemingly overnight speaking of night another fun feature of this something pretty minor but something which is kind of useful in the grand scheme of this is that the mossy areas of these 
patterns, this kind of pattern that I've repeated all the way down there to give the bridge a bit of texture but not kind of go overboard with how long it would take. I put in some mossy stone bricks in here and I've added glow lichen all the way around the outside of each of these to kind of give the idea that, you know, that whatever is growing there is spreading a little bit. But one of the things I realized was that doing that also lights up the Great Bridge pretty well. It's not 100% spawn proof, obviously, but it eliminates a lot of spawnable area in here as you go down the length of the bridge and combined with the amount of spawns that you get in the surrounding area and below, you don't see all that many mobs spawning up here. So it's kind of useful that this doesn't turn into a giant mob farm at night. And if that ever became a problem, I feel like we could light this area up a little bit more thoroughly just by incorporating some sort of, you know, lanterns, lamp posts, you know, all kinds of stuff that we could do here. Maybe even have some light posts sort of along the middle here as though it splits it into two lanes of traffic on the bridge but I think it's wide enough that you could bring pretty much any vehicle down here and I sort of want to get everybody together when they have their horses and have a race down here just to see how fast everybody's horses are. But enough yammering from me, I need to get back to my base and drop off all of the shelter boxes that I've used for this project because they basically contain the only stone that I have in the game and of course I need to get a lot more stone for some other stuff we're going to be building in the near future around here at the ruins but this and this are hopefully going to be connected in the near future and I'm looking forward to getting all of that stuff set up. Oh it honestly hurts to have this little stone after everything we've just done. I've got a couple of shulker boxes here that still have a little bit in but this is all the tough I have left and I've mined out a huge iron vein in this world so you'd think I'd have a lot more tough. Big shout out to my Twitch chat for encouraging me to color code my shulker boxes and get a bit more organized with the build process though because we got it down to the point where we could build one of those towers in about 45 minutes. It was not too shabby. Anyway, before we wrap things up, I have one more thing I want to take care of in this episode, <laughs> but it's not something I want to show on camera because I really want this to be a surprise. <laughs> well, what I've just done is either going to be found immediately for hilarious consequences, or it's just never going to be discovered. <laughs> it's going to sit there for a while, and to be honest, I don't know which outcome I prefer. I'd love doing stuff like this, <laughs> but that's, I think, where we're going to leave it for this episode. Let's head back over to spawn and get a good look at the Great Bridge one more time. There it is in all its glory, stretching away into the distance. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this dirt bridge. I don't think we'll be needing it for now. <laughs> but folks, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of Empire's SMP. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll be able to do a few more smaller builds, <laughs> which are going to take a little bit less time to come out. Well, folks, thank you so much for your patience. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.